Hello, my name is Race, and I'm an academic coach here at the school. Today, we are going to be go over, uh, going over a basic Canvas uh, navigation. So Canvas is the application that your courses will be structured through. And when you log into your classes, you will see something that looks very similar like this. And so we're going to kind of go over some of the features of Canvas and how to navigate uh, this LMS, or learning management system. So. Please keep in mind that I am doing this from my own account because technically I cannot log into students' accounts through Canvas. So I went to a school called the University of Utah. That's why you see this U up here. But the navigation of Canvas and the Canvas application will look the same across multiple schools, maybe with a couple of different changes. So keep that in mind. But generally, you're going to see something that looks like this when you log in. Now, um, I was in school about two years ago. I graduated spring of 2019. Um, so you can see right now, I do not have any classes on my dashboard, but when you log in, you will see your classes pop up right here, along with due dates that are coming up. You can see up in this upper right-hand corner, it says to do. And when I was in school, right up here, it would pop up with assignments that were coming up for this week, or maybe uh, due you know, in the next couple of days. Usually it schedules this about a week out, and you can see what you need to be accomplishing in the next few days to stay on top of your classes. This point right here, recent feedback, um, this will say when you get grades updated, like when you turn an assignment in and your teacher grades it, you're gonna see this pop up right here with the grade and feedback for that assignment. So if your teacher says something like, hey, you need to redo your sources on this or your works cited page didn't look so good, or maybe if you killed the assignment, you're gonna, they're gonna say, hey, you did really excellent on this, great job. That's all gonna pop up right here. Generally about a week or two is how long um, this feed keeps up for. If you click on this button, you can see view grades, and that's going to take you to a separate page that will show you your recent grades for assignments. Now again, I don't have any because I was in class two years ago, but when you click on this, it's gonna take you to grades, and this is a really great way to keep track of what is being graded and how well you did on it, which is really important in college. You definitely wanna keep up with your grades and how you're doing so that you make sure that you pass these classes that you are spending money on. Um, so again, your classes are gonna appear here. There's a couple different pieces off on the side right here. Let's start with the account piece. Uh, quite a few different things here. So you have your notifications. You can edit your profile from this link. Uh, there are a files and settings buttons. So files you can upload. Uh, here and then your settings as far as canvas is concerned can all be located right here Let's click on a few of these and just see kind of what this looks like um, Notifications This one's probably going to be blank uh, just because I don't really have any notifications, but um, You can see that like assignment due date changes are going to appear here. So really important um, You can see grading policies like course grading policy changes are going to appear here course content files, announcement, et cetera, et cetera. So basically this is gonna just be a really great place for you to check out any sort of different changes or notification settings having to do with your classes. The profile button in the account tab, uh, this is where you can edit your contact um, information, your biography, I haven't added one. Now I would encourage you to add a biography um, and uh, put an up-to-date profile picture of yourself just because uh, you are going to be interacting with your teachers and other students in the classes, and particularly if you are in a solely online program, this is going to be the only way that they're going to be really, uh, able to tell who you are and get a, an idea of you know what you look like and kind of you as a person, because it can be kind of difficult to interpret these things just based off of text alone. So part of college, um, just as an, a little bit of coaching advice here, part of college is the networking and your connection with your peers and your teachers. Um, that's a lot of what you are paying for here is, is that piece. So I encourage you to utilize these tools to connect with your peers and your teachers. Um, so files, we're just gonna kind of click through these real fast and you can explore a lot of this on your own, but you can see you know, any profile pictures you've uploaded, major submissions, um, conversation attachments, things like that. They're all going to be kept here. E-portfolios. This is a really, really handy tool. Um, ePortfolios are a place to keep all of your work. And we highly recommend that you keep an ePortfolio for any uh, future employers, for your classes. Um, for instance, if you are in business 
and you spend your college career writing nothing but business papers for four years, you want to have that to show to people to say, hey, here's a report I put together on microeconomics, or hey, here's a report and anal um, analyzation I put together on macroeconomics and their impact on America and its economy today. Things like that are things that you can show to potential employers and to uh, people in your network and contacts that you can say, hey, here's work I've done. This is why you should hire me. Or, hey, here's work I've done. This is why you should put me in this special program. So e-portfolios are really important to build, um, not just for business, but for other classes. Uh, art, um, you have to have an, a portfolio for art. So if you're an artist, just as an example, um, you want to keep a portfolio of your art. If you've ever gone to get a tattoo, um, your tattoo artist has a book that they show you that says, hey, here's the tattoos that I've done. So you can say, wow, man, that looks really awful. There's no way I'm going to let you ink my body. Or you say, wow, that's the most incredible thing I've ever seen. Absolutely, please, like, when can I get in for an appointment? Just as an example. So portfolios are really important. Canvas has a tool for you to use the, uh, and create your own e-portfolio. Um, clicking through really fast for the rest of these. Canvas obviously has a lot. So you're going to want to take some time to explore this. Um, honestly, we could spend two hours navigating the ins and outs of this, but I really want to kind of just give you a general overview right now. Um, these are some of the presentations that I have uploaded. Um, <laughs> you can see a much younger race. Had to do a couple of interviews for um, like introductions, or I had to record an interview about a couple of different things I did. Um, and they, these were all kept here. So like you can see that um, this is a great place to keep track of the media that you upload in your classes or to Canvas. Um, kind of clicking through the rest of these here. The box is a link to, if it will load, uh, generally to another place where you can upload things or blog. Um, some classes will use this, other classes will not. It kind of just depends. I'm going to skip the rest of these because they're not quite as important and I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, Folio is another tool that you may or may not use in the course of your classes. Some, some schools choose not to use this, other schools do. It kind of just depends your course feedback. And then, of course, uh, the QR for mobile login. Let me see. Here. So, Canvas does come with an app. You can see right here, if I hope that looks right, you can see that is what the app should look like um, on both iOS and Android. It's got that little circle. It's kind of hard to tell right there, but that's the Canvas symbol, and it does come with an app. And if you click on the app, it will take you to your dashboard. It will look very similar to what you are seeing online. So we highly recommend that you use the Canvas app and dashboard. Um, this was really handy for me. Uh, you can read your assignments, you can submit things or do quizzes on the app. Oftentimes when I was like sitting in line for the DMV or other stupid things that life throws at you, um, you can ch jump in and check your, your teacher feedback or things like, like that. Um, so definitely download the Canvas app. It's available on both Android and iOS, Mac, uh, iPhones. So definitely check that out. So let's kind of get into, um, I mean, this is kind of profile stuff. Let's get into the meat of this. So you have a calendar here. I'm gonna skip the courses for just a moment because that's kind of the, the, the most of what we wanna go over. But the calendar, if you have courses, it'll show you on these different dates uh, what's due and what you need to be looking at. So this is a really handy way to organize your, your life as far as school is concerned and say, okay, well, I have a giant project due on 10th. I need to make sure that this week of you know four through nine, April fourth through ninth, is not booked, and that I'm planning enough time to get this done. Other things that you can do is click on these days and add different events and say title like uh, I need to do a big project, and you can schedule that. You can say okay, well I'm off. You know I work nine to five, maybe seven to seven to um, eleven. I'm going to spend four hours on this project location home because I'm going to do it at home and I'm going to put it on my calendar and you can click submit and that'll schedule that for you. And so this is a really, really great tool to use. A um, couple of other functionalities, you can look at it just by week so that if you want to narrow it down, this will kind of tell you exactly when your assignments are due. They'll pop up right here. And then your agenda, um, if you have any courses or things or assignments due, it'll pop up right here as well. Um, your inbox, 
this is a really, really handy tool. This is a lot of what I used the app for. Um, when you get messages, you can respond using the app or you can respond here. And your teachers will message you through Canvas often. Uh, for instance, this was a show, uh, social statistics class that I took. And she was kind of just closing things out. Dear class, thank you for a great semester. It was a pleasure getting to know you. Exam three has now been graded. Your teachers will communicate with you through here. Um, I had a proposal that I had to uh, submit for a research methods in psychology. And um, you know we had to set up a time. And so this is me talking with uh, the teacher and kind of setting this up, things like that. So this is a really handy tool to keep track of and manage your communication in college. Um, history is generally just going to keep track of like what you did and kind of where you went during the week, things like that, um, and your your links and stuff. So you can see that I've kind of been messing around with this a little bit. So let's jump into a class. Um, as I said, I don't have any current classes. So we're actually going to explore a couple of my old classes here. Um, generally though, if you click on courses, it will show you your current enrollments. So it'll show you the two or three or for whatever, how many classes you're in, and you can click on them from there. I have to go to past enrollments, and so this is what this looks like, but you can access your old classes. Um, you know, these are from 2018, 2019, when I was back in college, back when I was a young, young guy, young and naive. Um, so let's take a look at maybe one of these. Let's try statistical research methods. This was a stats class, and if you are in a psychology major, you can definitely plan on taking something similar to this, but when you get here, you'll see a couple of different things pop up. Home, very simple, just kind of a landing page for the class. So it's going to tell you what the class is. This was Psi 3000, um, Statistical Methods in Psychology. Right here, right at the top, it's going to say Problem with Canvas. Um, this is University of Utah, but you will see something similar for your school that says like the help desk or where to reach out for help. So if you have any issues with like assignments or something's not submitting, or anything like that, um, you can access that right here. Now you can view the course stream. Um, this again, you're not going to see anything here because, like, I don't have any actual courses. But if you click on that button, it's going to show you what you need to do, what's been graded. The stream is just kind of your active stuff that you're doing in that class. You can also click view course calendar. This is gonna take you to a calendar version of the class. And if you can pretend for just a minute that um, I'm actually enrolled in this class, it's gonna show you like assignment due here, assignment due here. It's gonna show you when you need to do things so that you can have an active calendar to look at uh, to be able to kind of plan your courses and things like that. Let's go back, hopefully, uh, it won't work because I'm not in it. Let's go back to this course. And you'll have to excuse me because some functions of this are not working because I'm not currently enrolled in these classes. So your landing page, um, these will look different for each class. Um, it kind of depends on the professor and what they put up. So this professor was really, really on top of it. She added the syllabus. And you, you, know, you can see the link right here if it's underlined in red. Here's the course syllabus. This will tell you exactly everything that you know we're kind of doing when the labs meet the instructor uh, the instructor was trisha weeks she was incredible dr weeks was amazing um, course goals learning outcomes and so here's the big part when you get a new college course read the syllabus um 110 read the syllabus because you absolutely need to know exactly what's happening with that and what is going to be graded in the class how the class is structured what textbooks are required um, this one required a workbook and other information, um, important dates, last day to drop classes. I mean, the syllabus has everything that you need to know about navigating these courses so that it's not a mystery. Uh, let me see if I can find lab assignments. Um, lab assignments were 10% of this grade. So for instance, if I got a 95%, but I did not attend the lab, which is kind of a separate meeting. Some courses have labs and we can go over that. Or if you have questions about labs, go over that with your coach. But the lab grade was 10%. So if you don't attend that extra piece of this course, you're going to lose 10% of your grade. So even if you get a 95% on your exams, your quizzes and your homework, but you don't go to the lab, you're only gonna get an 85% in the class. Um, right here to tell you exactly what is expected. So if you get a 92 plus, that's an A. 
you know, kind of the grades, how incomplete extra credit work. Um, I could go on and on and on, but the syllabus is incredibly important. So please, 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 first thing you do when you get a class, go to the homepage. They should have the syllabus uploaded. Read it. It is worth your time. A um, couple of other things. I don't want to make this too long, but you can see that they have contact information, a guide to Canvas. And in fact, um, this is an incredibly important piece of information. So if you ever get confused or you don't want to come back and read my or watch my video on this, um, these are incredible resources as far as how to navigate Canvas and things like that. Um, grades, this is an important one right here. You can see, you can keep track of your grades and Canvas has a space for this. So you can always know exactly what you're getting on all of these assignments. Um, it'll show you the score, what it's out of, what the status is. It'll even take you to the grade if you click on it. Um, or I'm sorry, it'll take you to the assignment if you click on it. <laughs> Again, this class is two years out of date, so you can't see things that you may normally be able to see, but if the teacher had said this is something to say, or if I had something to say, you can add a comment right here. Your grade's gonna be up top right here. It shows you when you submitted it. Um, apparently I was doing this right in the middle of the day, must have had that day off. Other important pieces, if you go to pages, this, again, kind of is just the home page, but it has uh, grading policies, guide to exam one, guide to exam two, uh, how to access the syllabus. I mean, basically, pages here will be updated with any pieces or um, pages of relevant information that your professors have deemed uh, applicable to the class and to your knowledge. Um, they even have another page for the syllabus right here. Uh, you can access your quizzes from right here. <laughs> And again, some of these courses will look different. Um, some of these, some schools may do this a little bit differently, but generally you can expect your classes to look something like this. Um, a lot of them will be divided into modules. And if they are not, it'll be divided some other way, but generally they'll have a page for it right here where you can say, okay, module one, you know, uh, how do we scientific approach to knowledge? That was the start of this class. And then it really jumped in from there. Oh boy, uh, the statistics class was fun. T-dependent groups, ANOVA testing, um, things like that, regression, regression of the mean, chi-square goodness of fit. This was a really fun class. But um, if there's any media, they have the media gallery uploaded, um, all sorts of different things. Now these are kind of specific to this course, and so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time going over these kind of bottom pieces here. Um, but if you have Zoom meetings, they are right down here. Uh, ProctorU was, what the University of Utah was using to proctor student exams. So if you needed to sign up for an exam, that would be here. You may find something similar for your course. Um, again, these are kind of really specific for this and for the University of Utah. But generally, you can expect most of the pieces that you need. In fact, all of the pieces that you need for a course should be uploaded right here. And your teacher should be uploading the pages right on this home page. Uh, right here. And then, of course, on the side, it says to do. It'll show you the assignments that you need to do each and every day, each and every week. Um, I just added this. And so you can see that even if you add something on the calendar, um, it'll appear right here and that you can schedule that. So really, as long as you are using these tools to structure your courses and to structure your, uh, your time, these are very, very handy pieces that you can use to make sure that you get organized in college and that you are on top of your assignments and what you need to do and how you need to manage them. Because to be honest with you, it can be very tough doing work and taking care of your family and trying to get school done all at the same time. It can be very, very strenuous and arduous. And so these are very, very handy tools that they have put in for you to be able to navigate this. Um, so that's kind of a basic rundown of what Canvas looks like. And I don't want to get too far into it because it will look a little bit different for each class and for each school. But just as a general navigation tool, you can click on account to edit things with your own account and kind of check things that are central to you. You can click on your dashboard to see the, uh, the classes that you are currently in and what you need to be doing week by week. Again, they would show the assignments here generally that say, hey, 
you have a class due tomorrow or you have a course due tomorrow, um, you need to get this assignment done, it would also pop up in your to-do. You can click on view grades right here, super handy tool. Um, your courses, click on right here, and you can see your current courses for your ancient dinosaur friend race. These are all um, past courses that are kind of back here, but let's just click on another one just for fun, personality theory. You can see it looks pretty much exactly the same. They have the home, the syllabus, everything is kind of the same on the left-hand side here. Um, this professor did choose to do it a little bit differently as far as you know how they, they structure this. And um, you'll, that's, that's totally fine. You'll see that they do, uh, teachers and professors do kind of do these their own way. And that's kind of the exciting part about colleges. That's what you're paying for is the teacher's own teaching and perception of a course. But anyways, you can see that this is structured very, very similarly, uh, totally different class. But if you click on these pieces over here, you can see the different modules are separated right here. If you click on the assignments, it will take you to the assignments that you need to do and when you need to do them. And it'll go over some of these um, pieces. So this one, you know, this chapter covers these broad topics. But anyways, courses is a great way to start out by navigating uh, your Canvas experience. Calendar, this was a great tool. Please use your calendar. Uh, please schedule things that you need to do in advance because we all get super busy, especially if you're trying to balance all the other aspects and nuances of life while you're trying to do school. It can become a lot. And so use this tool to write things down and to send reminders, especially if you have the Canvas app, you can set it to send notifications right to your phone. Um, you don't have to be on a computer to use this. And that's why this is so handy is because it is able to do so many things while you're busy, excuse me, <laughs> out in the world and um, you're kind of too busy to look at your computer, get the app because you can do much of this right from your smartphone, which we all have in our pockets all the time. Um, your inbox, again, just a great place to connect with. Uh, sometimes your peers will message you here. Sometimes your teachers will be talking to you at this point. Um, you can see that I was talking to Weeks, uh, Professor Weeks. We just called her Trish because she was awesome. Um, but Dr. Lace Padilla, I mean, you can see right here that your teachers will communicate with you through this tool. So it's very, very important. And then finally, if you need any help, again, there's a help button right down here. So the lost right here first. You have Canvas guides. Click on these. This will, I mean, they've already made a guide for you to be able to go through and, you know, figure out how all of this works. Very, very handy. Um, Canvas support right here in this help button as well. Report a problem. Um, support hotline. Whatever you need, this help button is very, very handy for that as well. And if you have any questions, um, please reach out to your academic coach or the school uh, to be able to answer those questions and get the help that you need. Communication is of the utmost importance while you are here in college. Um, I cannot stress that enough. It, it, it is something that you absolutely need to be doing. And so please just make sure that you are communicating with the people that you need to to be successful. Almost nobody completes school on their own. Um, and you need the support structures around you to be successful most of the time. Use them. Do not be afraid to make use of the resources that you have. Uh, that kind of uh, is going to conclude the general Canvas guide uh, for now. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. We would be happy to assist you. Thank you.